uh, as uh, Allied uh, artillery, in this case uh, artillery belonging to the Pan-Arab force and tank fire uh, roared through the very early morning hours. Now, as you can see, it's beginning to be uh, uh, just a short while past dawn here in the Saudi Arabian desert and the tremendous advantage that U.S. and Allied forces have with their night fighting equipment begins to be neutralized by the daylight. Let's go to Bob Schieffer now in New York. Bob? Well, Dan, unlike uh, Bob McEwen, who we just heard from, uh, who's just one mile from the Kuwait border, we're well out of the line of fire back here in uh, New York. But I'm with General Bob Wagner, an old tank commander. In fact, uh, one of the units you commanded uh, is in the thick of this thing right now. General, and I could tell as we were listening to Bob that you, you wanted to be there. My heart is with him, Bob. We uh, thought we might uh, try to flesh out some of the uh, details that uh, we've been getting uh, uh, about what it's like up there and ask General Wagner to tell us, uh, we talk about the forces that are up there, what those forces are composed of. And that would be mobile artillery, armored personnel carriers, the tank in the Apache helicopter. Let's start at the beginning, the M109. And we have some uh, information and some graphics about this. Uh, this is uh, the, uh, uh, what amounts to a pro self-propelled howitzer, is it not, General? Bob, these are the systems that make a mounted or an armored division work. And we're going to start from the rear and work up. This is a self-propelled artillery piece. It throws a large HE round almost 30 miles. The thing you have to understand about this is with every small unit to the front, there's a small fire direction team that can direct this fire right in front of our advancing troops. Now that goes along with the Bradley fighting vehicle and basically that is a personnel carrier. That's an infantry carrier, carries nine infantrymen. It is armed with a twin tow missile, which is an anti-tank defeating. It also has a 25 millimeter chain gun, which will defeat all Soviet made armored personnel systems. A very powerful system in itself that carries an infantry squad. All of our mounted squads travel in this vehicle. And then from above, while all that is going on, while the Bradley is moving forward along with that uh, self-propelled artillery, from up above the Apache attack helicopter, and unlike tank battles in the past, this is something new, is it not, General? Yes, and the, hope that the Apache has had tremendous success. As you know, they've, cap they've captured a lot of people on the ground, which is amazing, first time in history. This is equipped with a Hellfire anti-tank uh, system, rocket system. It has the Hydra 70 anti-personnel rocket system. And it also has a 30 millimeter chain gun. So it has a system that takes out dismounted personnel, indirect fire, its own organic artillery, and an anti-tank rocket all in a single helicopter, Bob. An awesome weapon system, all weather, all and, weather capability. And, and then the backbone of this force, Absolutely. and that is the M1 tank. And we want to look at that now. Tell us about this tank, General. Well, of course, I'm a tanker, and this is near my heart. This is the centerpiece of the battle that we will see. The most awesome weapon system in the theater on the ground. 67 tons of rolling death, 125 millimeter gun, fires at night, fires under all kinds of conditions, fires on the move as accurately as it fires from a static position. An awesome system. The best tank in the world. And also the fastest. And it will prove it. All right. Well, that's what it looks like up there, Dan. Thanks, Bob. Uh, Dateline Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Uh, a Patriot missile knocked out a Scud fired as the ground war offensive began. A Scud was fired at Riyadh. A Patriot missile is reported knocked it out at 30,000 feet. It's also reported uh, by the Saudis that Allied forces have captured the small island of Falaka. That island commands the sea approaches to Kuwait City. Uh, it was captured right at the start of the ground phase of the Gulf War. U.S. Marines moved in and uh, captured it. Uh, fighting was said to be heavy on that island. Now we're going to take a station break in our CBS News live coverage of the beginning of the ground war. We'll continue after we take this opportunity to let our stations identify themselves. This is CBS. Wait. The story ahead on News 3 tonight. Memphis leaders rally to stop city violence. And mid-southerners learn just how dangerous drugs can be. Hi, Those I'm stories getting... and more ahead on News 3 tonight. Multiple sclerosis.
This is a News 3 update. Good evening, I'm Debbie McIntyre. Coming up at 10 on News 3 tonight, an all-out ground war is around the corner as Iraq defies the U.S. ultimatum to withdraw from Kuwait. Memphis leaders rally to put a stop to violent crime in the city. A Memphis mailman is shot on the job, and a new Memphis queen is crowned. Join Joe Larkins and me at 10 for News 3 tonight. My period is more than pain. It's bloating. It's tension. It's a pamperin period. Tylenol and Advil only relieve pain, but pamperin's three ingredients relieve pain, bloating, and tension. Only pamperin relieves a pamperin period. I found the secret to my arthritis pain relief. Flexol 454, endorsed by the trainers of professional football, basketball, baseball, and hockey. Now, Flexol's available to the rest of us who live with pain. Flexol, the pain relief pro trainers recommend. <laughs> well, excuse me. What for? For having the biggest six-hour sale in Jolly Royal history. And you're sorry? I don't get it. We're so sorry that everyone who wanted to save money couldn't be waited on during our six-hour sale. The place was packed with bargain hunters. It's no wonder with the marked down prices at Jolly Royal. That's why Jolly Royal said leave those prices marked down today. Everything in the store is drastically reduced. So stop worrying and get to Jolly Royal right now while six-hour sale prices mean savings for you. Ah. <sighs> This is WREG-TV, Memphis. The following News 3 presentation is closed caption for the hearing impaired. Tonight, the Allied forces have launched an all-out attack to liberate Kuwait. I have therefore directed... General Norman Schwarzkopf, in conjunction with coalition forces, to use all forces available, including ground forces, to eject the Iraqi army from Kuwait. Good evening, I'm Joe Larkins. And I'm Debbie McIntyre. President Bush announced tonight that Allied forces have launched an all-out assault to liberate Kuwait. The ground attack began at 7 o'clock Memphis time. The massive ground operation comes after Allied forces stepped up bombardment of Iraqi ground forces and cities. Tonight, President Bush expressed regret that Saddam took no action before the noon deadline. He says the liberation of Kuwait has entered the final phase. Accomplish their mission. Tonight is this coalition of countries seeks to do that which is right and just. I ask only that all of you stop what you were doing and say a prayer for all the coalition forces and especially for our men and women in uniform who this very moment are risking their lives for their country and for all of us. May God bless and protect each and every one of them and may God bless the United States of America. The Pentagon does not plan to release many details over the next 24 to 48 hours. Officials say they don't want to give the Iraqis any information that could help them in selecting a location for a chemical weapon attack. Secretary of Defense Dick Cheney is being cautious about the ground war. Uh, military operation against a uh, well-equipped, uh, well-fortified opponent. Um, I would not want to underestimate uh, the difficulties of the task at all. Just after the attack, air raid sirens sounded in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. That usually indicates a Scud missile attack. However, there were no reports of any incoming warheads. There were no reports of any damage or injuries during the alert. The ground war comes after Iraq defied a U.S. ultimatum to withdraw. Iraq's deputy chairman of the ruling Revolutionary Command Council dismissed President Bush's deadline as an aggressive ultimatum that they would ignore. The Iraqi military reminded or remained defiant, saying if a ground war began, the Allies would plunge into a great crater of death. Iraq's defiance against the Allies became even more evident today. Hours after the U.S. deadline, Iraq launched another Scud missile attack against Israel. Iraq fired the Scud just minutes before the noon deadline passed. No injuries were reported. A U.S. military spokesman says the rocket carried a conventional warhead. Patriot missiles were fired to try to intercept that missile. 
Instead of pulling out of Kuwait, Iraq is causing death and destruction throughout that country. U.S. military officials say Iraqi troops are executing people at random in a new campaign of terror in Kuwait City. Officials say there are reports of rape, torture and brutal killings in Kuwait. The terror campaign had been stepped up in the last 48 hours. Earlier today, Kuwaiti officials said allied forces should not give the Iraqis any more time. They have shown that they are using time to commit more atrocities and to hurt more people and to buy more land, I mean, uh, destroy uh, more oil fields and uh, destroy the infrastructure of Kuwait. The allied forces are condemning the act against civilians, calling it terrorism at its finest. Meanwhile, Iraq has deliberately set fire to nearly 200 oil wells in Kuwait. Officials say black clouds of smoke continue to hang over fields in Kuwait. President Bush is calling the act a scorched earth policy. Some of those fires could burn as long as a month. Top officials say the fires won't slow the Allied forces down. Earlier today, the U.S.-led allies continued the largest air assault in military history. Allied planes flew more than 2,900 sorties today, including a record number over Kuwait. Some of those raids included attacks using napalm and fuel air explosives, which exploded on Iraqi positions. Some of the strikes against Baghdad were among the heaviest in weeks. Tennessee Senator Jim Sasser is trying to help some of the Gulf troops get payback from their jobs when they get back home. Senator Sasser will propose new legislation to allow workers with the Tennessee Valley Authority to donate annual leave time to co-workers now serving in the Guard and Reserves. That way, those in the Gulf will not get reduced pay because of their active military status. TVA officials say a Memphian, Frank Cable, came up with the idea. Well, coming up, a Memphis mailman is shot on the job. That story's next, and local leaders rally to stop such violence in the city. A commercial appeal. Keep it handy all day. While you're doing nothing, find out everything. appeal. If you haven't read it, it's still news. How do I know where to get my brakes done right? Come to Midas. There's a lot of value in our $49 or $69 basic brake service. And you get something else. Peace of mind. Knowing you get a thorough inspection by Midas trained experts and a written estimate up front. Knowing every brake shoe and pad is guaranteed for as long as you own your car. And knowing the job will be done right. That's why more people come to us for breaks, knowing that nobody beats Midas. Nobody. Drug and alcohol abuse each year killed twice as many Americans as died in the entire Vietnam War. One out of every four American teenagers regularly drinks alcohol. If you really care about someone who misuses drugs or alcohol, do something about it. Call St. Joseph Hospital. We have trained professionals standing by 24 hours a day. For a free assessment, call 1-800-234-3257. You can make a difference. Your Mid-South Chevy Geo dealers present Chevy's S10 pickup truck versus Ford's Ranger. Chevy's S10 has a longer, wider cargo box than the Ranger. The S10 delivers more available horsepower than the outdated Ranger. With V6 power and air conditioning, you can now save $3,245, including $1,000 cash back on Chevy's S10. Tough decision, huh? Just one more way Chevy is winning over Ford at Mid-South Chevy Geo Dealers. A mailman is shot as he made his deliveries today in Orange Mound. The shooting happened this afternoon in the 2600 block of Dedrick. Police say the letter carrier, Jerome Curran, was walking on the street when he heard a shot fired. He was hit in the right arm and taken to the med where he's in stable condition tonight. Police don't know if the shot was intended for the mailman. Police are still looking for a suspect in that shooting. The post office is offering a $5,000 reward for information leading to an arrest and conviction in the case. A group of Memphians tired of violent crimes got together to find out what they can do to stop it. Local ministers started an anti-crime campaign by going door to door in December. Doug Johnston discovered the group has now taken its case to City Hall. The acts of violent crime have forced the majority of this city's citizens to think of what we have lost and what we're losing. Ministers of Memphis Against Violent Crimes held a kickoff rally in front of City Hall today. 
their message is that violence is destroying parts of Memphis and another way to deal with problems must be found. We are here today because the acts of violent crime in our city have brought about conditions of hopelessness, family hardships, and immense distrust of fellow human beings. The work began last year with the Men's Fellowship of Oak Grove Baptist Church passing out buttons in a housing project. The buttons call for thinking before fighting. That's something Bluff City residents hope can help. We gotta save our black race, for one. We gotta help each other, we gotta accomplish something. A better place. That's what the people here want. They not only want to stop black on black crime, but all crime. After a year with 207 murders, a record number, the mayor of Memphis told the crowd crime is more than a racial issue. You notice I didn't say that the 207 deaths were black or white. That has nothing to do with it. I said 207 deaths. And the ministers hope people will start paying attention to the calls for change. Doug Johnson, News 3 Tonight. The mayor says the city will come and talk to any group of more than two people about fighting crime in Memphis. Debbie? Memphis police officers are spreading a drug-free message. Miss Tennessee spent a day at the Collierville Community Center explaining to children and adults how to identify drugs like crack and ice. Experts in chemical dependency were also on hand to explain how to recognize the symptoms among family members. Skits were also performed to show the bad effects of drugs. Some Southerners found out today what the world would be like without sound. The program of the Children's Museum is called It's a Deaf, Deaf World. Visitors were not allowed to speak. After a brief session learning the hand sign alphabet, they had to communicate strictly by signing. Some visitors found it to be frustrating. They meet many frustrations in trying to communicate in the drugstore, at work, uh, with their children's teachers at school. We don't realize how much communication means to us until it becomes a problem. That exhibit ends tomorrow afternoon. Well, we're looking forward to warmer temperatures. Mm -hmm. A nice day today, and guess what? A nice day tomorrow. Oh, goody. Yeah, boy, there's some bad news on the other side of that that we don't want to talk about, but we will, coming up in the weather next. Monday on News 3. does not want to sit home and watch Walt Disney all night long. I've got girls that work for me that are good girls. I see absolutely no reason for their existence. You just got things that you don't want anywhere near a neighborhood. Spend your Sunday mornings with me, Bobby North. I'll guide you through a visual tour of homes on Cry Like Realtors Sunday Home Showcase. It's right here at 1030 on WREG-TV3. Nissan truck, his or hers. He can use its powerful engine for the hills. She can use its comfortable ride in the city. He can use its towing power for the lakes. She can use its giant cargo volume for hauling. So can he. Or they can both use the Nissan truck together for some extravehicular activities. The Nissan truck is or hers. All we know is if you try it, you'll buy it. See your local Nissan dealer and give it a try. Don't miss Hancock Fabrics' big first birthday fabric sale at the Winchester location. See Sunday's paper for tremendous values. Hancock Fabrics, where well, the best is not expensive. You gotta see what Fleming can do for you. Memphis has best furniture prices every day, like a luxury double incliner section of $5.99. Plus, no interest, no payments till June. How can they be that? Welcome home, America, to the biggest Dodge truck sale ever. We're dropping the cost of owning the Dodge truck you want. Save up to $4,200 on full-size Dodge pickups, up to $3,700 on Dodge Dakotas, and up to $4,370 on Ram vans. It's the largest total savings ever available on these Dodge trucks, with prices starting under $8,000. So drop into your Dodge dealer now. See your Memphis Dodge dealers. Advantage Dodge. A pretty good-looking weekend mm -hmm. out there. Yes, Sunshine. it's about time. I like to have nice weekends. Could be a little bit warmer, but... It will uh, be. Tomorrow will Tomorrow. even be warmer than okay. it was today. Clouds will be coming in, and by Monday, I'm afraid, 
Rain again. We'll tell huh? you about that. Well, could be even more than just rain. We'll tell you about that in just a second. Give you the good news first. It's partly cloudy. 39 degrees out at the airport. Winds are from the south at 5 miles an hour. Relative humidity at 79%. The barometer 30.07, and it is steady. Our high temperature for today, a gorgeous 58 degrees. It was really a nice day. 55 is normal. The record set back in 1980.